680's Richard Southern joins us now. Happy Friday, Richard. Good to see you. Friday, how are you these days? What's new and exciting with you? Oh, tons of stuff. It's all you, election coming. Well, you got, this is going to be big, right? On Monday, the, all the leaders are in for a debate at City News. We You're are very be... excited to host the very first televised Ontario leaders debate. So you got to ask Doug Ford for me what he's planning to do with the housing market should he get elected, uh, if he's going to roll back some of those provisions that Wynn put in place to cool the market. I'm interested to see what he might have to say about that. I think we might suspect that that question might come up, perhaps. A lot of good questions. I know you're taking a lot from from viewers and what have you, so it should be good on yes. Monday, 6 o'clock, right? Definitely watch, 6 yeah. to 8. Yes. All right, down to business. And the first question concerns coffee. Starbucks Canada is following the lead of its U.S. parent and planning to close all of its locations in Canada for a brief period next month. Very interesting. And, of course, that was such a uh, controversial incident that happened in the U.S. that sparked this. Yeah, that's right. The announcement comes uh, about a month after um, uh, two black men were arrested in a Philadelphia area Starbucks simply for waiting for a friend. They hadn't bought anything. Uh, Starbucks apologized for that. They actually reached a financial settlement with the men, the price not disclosed. But yeah, today Starbucks Canada says we're going to close all our stores on June 11th in the afternoon for sensitivity training. They actually called it uh, implicit, buying, uh, implicit bias training. Chain says they want to create a culture of warmth and belonging. So it's a big move because ultimately when you're closing all these stores, it's going to uh, impact your earnings, even if it is for just an hour or two, Cynthia. But Starbucks really uh, eager to put uh, this um, controversy behind it. Absolutely. Now, I love how cell phones were involved and that people brought out their cell phones and shot the whole thing. That way, you know, nobody, a company can't escape it. It's there. Yep, that's true. And the way Starbucks dealt with it, uh, they're getting a lot of credit for it because the CEO flew to the city right away. They immediately got on top of the story. So kind of different than the way, say, Facebook dealt with their data breach scandal uh, last month. Absolutely. And a new report, I'm fascinated by this one, Richard. A new report finds marijuana is a major threat to Canada's alcohol industry. And Canadians are already spending more money on pot than booze. Yep. I was shocked when I saw that. On a per capita basis, because there are more alcohol drinkers than they are marijuana users, but still, you can see in this chart here, this is from Alta Corp Capital, the 22 million people that drink alcohol, they spend about 985 bucks a year on it on average. Those that smoke marijuana, 4.8 million people, spend more than 1,100 bucks per year. And Alta Corp uh, says in this report that, um, you know, uh, marijuana will be a significant threat to the big alcohol producers in Canada. It could slash alcohol sales by 15%. And that's why, Cynthia, we've already seen some alcohol companies trying to get into the sector. Constellation mm -hmm. Brands, a, a big maker of beer and liquor, they took a stake in Canopy Growth, the biggest Canadian marijuana player. So I'm probably going to see more of that as we move towards the legalization date. Fascinating. And Toyota, Toyota reportedly planning to spend big money on its Ontario assembly plants. That's good news. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Toyota shelling out $1.4 billion to expand uh, the, uh, the building of the RAV4 sport utility vehicle here in Ontario. So its Cambridge factory will be retooled to start producing that RAV4 early next year. That'll create 450 jobs. Its Woodstock plant has already been pumping out the, the RAV4. This is the latest sign, Cynthia, of automakers moving away from sedans and almost exclusively now making SUVs and crossover SUVs. We heard from Ford just uh, last week that 90% of the vehicles it makes will be either pickup trucks or SUVs. Nobody wants those sedans anymore, so automakers try to keep pace with demand. Interesting. And the royal wedding. People love this story. It's just a week away and it has a royal size budget. You're looking at the breakdown of what it's costing. I can't imagine. Yeah, e even if you're not interested in the wedding, this is kind of fascinating stuff. The wedding, all told, will cost 55 million Canadian, Cynthia. Wow. So look at this. For food and drinks, they're shelling out a 600 186,000 that includes 45 grand just for sausage rolls and tea. <laughs> uh, the the lemon elderflower cake will cost 86 grand. Megan Merkel's dress believed to be in the uh, ballpark of half a million. The outdoor marquee another half a million dollars. The live music 430,000. They have 20 silver plated trumpets that will announce the wedding. 100 grand for that. Wow. In invitations a cool 290,000. Flowers 157,000. So again all told 32 million British pounds, 52 million Canadian the average Canadian wedding for uh, commoners like you and I, Cynthia, that's uh -huh. about $31,000 this year. So Is it $31,000? That's still, still a, a lot, lot of money. money. Yeah, it is still a lot of money. I should mention that um, the, the royal couple are paying for it out of their own resources, so it won't cost the British taxpayer a penny. Most of the money actually going towards security on that big day. Well, I was going to ask you, maybe you can tell me next week, if you crunch some more numbers, what is it costing 
you know, London to, to hold this with security. Yeah, we'll look into that because, uh, you know, from the last royal wedding, the security demands have increased quite dramatically. Absolutely. Okay, now Los Angeles-based denim brand is taking the internet by storm by selling jeans that, oh my goodness, that leave very little <laughs> to the imagination. Viewer discretion advised, it's uh, extreme cutout jeans, that's what they're calling them, denim company Carmar. Uh, they describe them as high-rise pants with large statement cutouts in the front and back. <laughs> Cynthia, it's 168 bucks despite the lack of fabric. Can you believe it? Many on social media wondered who would buy them, but they are sold out on this company's website. There's a waiting list for those extreme cutout jeans. I might start wearing those around the newsroom, maybe, if they're the in thing. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> I Cynthia think they're summer pow, jeans, pow, not winter that. jeans. <laughs> 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 All right, Richard, thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see Thanks, you Monday. See you.